Hey, horror fans! Once again, it is me, the R. Mizen Manichi. It's time to review the latest Demon Possession horror film. It's the Argentina horror film called When Evil Lurks. <laughs> Evil Lurks is a 2023 Argentine supernatural horror film and was written and directed by Damian Rugna. Now, the film stars Ezekiel Rodriguez, Damon Solomon, and Luis Zembrowski. Now, in this film, a remote village, in a remote village, two brothers find a demon-infected man just about to give birth to evil itself. They decide to get rid of the man, but merely succeed in only spreading the chaos. And chaos does get spilled in this film. You know, horror fans, as I stated in my review of The Exorcist Believer, demon possession horror films in America aren't as popular subgenre as slasher films are. Yeah, you do have your several good demon possession or possession exorcist films, but by my large, they're really not a popular subgenre of horror. That's because most of the films in subgenre are basically the same. You know, we have a demon that possesses someone or some things. You know, they talk in tongues. They do their little spider twitchy walk. They crawl on all fours. They use foul language and they're spinning their heads all around. It's something we always seen before. And it seems like American filmmakers of this subgenre don't try to do anything new or different when it comes to demon possession or possession exorcist horror films. I mean, there's only a couple of demon possession horror films that didn't use this approach, like such as The Exorcism of Emily, Emily Rose, which sort of more like a courtroom drama, and then we have The Possession, which doesn't involve Catholic priests. So, you know, it's quite refreshing when we see a demon possession horror film that doesn't use a typical approach that we see in most American horror films. So that brings us to Argentine writer-director Damien Rucka's latest project called When Evil Lurks. Hmm. Now we're introduced to two brothers, Pedro and Jaime. He's called Jimmy in the subtitle. Sue, so after discovering a man, body of a mutilated man, he's basically cut in half, learned that the neighbor's son, Ural, is possessed by a demon. Ooh. Now the brothers contact the landowner, Ruiz, and they decide to move the body away before Yuri gives birth to the demon. Now, eventually, this will lead the brothers and everyone in the town in a series of events that will spell doom for everyone involved. And that's kind of basically what the film is about. Now, I really haven't seen any horror movies from Argentina, and I haven't seen Damon Rucker's other films that was released here in the States. It was called Terrified. Uh, it was a very successful horror film. Uh, I really haven't seen many people talk about it, but most of the critics did enjoy this film. It was commercial success. It was uh, A lot of critics did enjoy the film, but I never saw the film. Now, based on what I've seen in this film, he see, it, it seems that he understands what horror fans want to see when watching horror films. I thought it was a very well complicated, very well complimentary, very interesting, very brutal, and very violent horror film. Now, uh, Damon, he takes a different approach when it comes to demon possession horror films. So it's so refreshing to finally see a filmmaker that has some and actually uses some creativity when making a horror film. The first thing is the possessed person is called a name. I won't say that name here. And then there are professionals that are hired to deal with the possessed person. I won't reveal that name in here. And there are rules regarding possessed people that people that you must follow. If you break these rules, then something bad is going to happen. So when you see the rules being said, you know that they already been broken or more will be broken along the way. You know, he doesn't use the cliche tropes that we've seen in plenty of horror films of the sun, Johnny. We don't see heads spinning. We don't see people crawling up the walls or doing spider walks. Or do we actually have a Catholic priest perform an exorcism? There's no religion aspects in this particular film. It's just strictly a demon possession film, but told in a very different type of way. Now, the approach and way that Rugner uses is quite different and at times can be very brutal and very violent and very bloody. One thing I'm glad that he does that was not done on The Exorcist Believer, he doesn't hold back on the brutality as there are several scenes of, of violent action that play place throughout the film. I mean, yeah, there's some very crazy stuff that happens. You know, one of those scenes, which I will not spoil here, takes place right around the second act of the film, and you know 
I knew that something bad was going to happen, just how the scene is set up and how it's shot. And when it does, it just just happens like snap. And it's like, what the hell? It's one of those WFT moments. <laughs> I'm pretty sure a lot of people said that when that happened. <laughs> He's probably said, what the, probably won't say what I said, what the hell? But they probably said, what the, you know. <laughs> I mean, there are other violent and brutal scenes that take place in the movie, which gives the movie the type of dread that this film needs. I mean, it shot very well, nice. Uh, it shot somewhere, I'm pretty sure it shot somewhere in Argentina, but the area that uh, Rum, Rum, Rugna does film this film is very uh, dreary. It's dark. There's no happiness in this particular film. Uh, you know, we get to learn some more about the brother's background, particularly Pedro and his uh, character and his background, uh, you know, what he's been dealing with. I thought it was an interesting touch added on to the film. And basically, it's the film treats demonic possession like a virus. And that's basically what it does, uh, spreading itself all around the town, causing everyone to act violently once uh, they break one of the rules, you know, when some uh, event happens, all of a sudden that person does something violently, and then we get another person that breaks rules and something violent happens on, on that one. It's like it's like more of a virus. That's what this film plays demonic possession as. And we get some very emotional scenes throughout the film, and that's through the brain acting of the two leads, the actors that play uh, Pedro and Jimmy, when I thought they were fantastic together, they had some great chemistry together, uh, everyone does a good job, the entire cast does a fantastic job, it's something we really haven't seen here in American audiences, when it especially comes to this subgenre, because it's basically all the same, and this is something so refreshing, so different, and just seeing their expression on Pedro's faces when he tried to save it, when he when he does some of the things he does in this particular film. You see Jimmy, he's also, ex he shows his expression. So it's good to see some brilliant acting along with some great filmmaking here. Also, Rugner only uses practical effects, so we don't get any bad or terrible CGI effects like we've seen before in filming the Sandra, Sandra here in Maine in the States. That's another pet peeve. It seems like for some reason, American filmmakers are so reliant on CGI effects. You would think that, can't we get some practical effects? I mean, that's what makes The Exorcist such a fantastic film. But unfortunately, it seems like directors are more reliant on CGI effects. Give us practical effects. You do it, you hire the right people, you have the right story, you have the right film, you have the right atmosphere. You can make a decent demon possession horror film with some good practical effects, just like we see in this film here. I mean, it amazes me how well put together this film is, as we need to see more films like this here made to the, made here in the States. Now, while it's not scary, as some people have said it is, to me it's not scary, but Rungna here has created a decent, effective horror film where he doesn't hold back on the violence and brutality. Uh, it's filmed very well, love the cinematography in the film, and it's a refreshing, a refreshing a different take on on Demon Possession, John, that's something that American filmmakers should be looking into. I mean, if you want to do something different, this is the path you need to go. I'm not saying you have to copy his style, but this is something you want to try that we have not seen in Demon Possession films here in the States. So I'm going to give When Evil Lurks four out of my five bloody gold coins. You know, I love it when a filmmaker actually tried to do something different. And I always give credit for filmmakers when they try to do something different, but then they also succeed in that uh, story that they're telling. And Ruckner does a fantastic job. Really appreciate the style and effort that he put in here. Like I said, we have some great ad things, some great practical effects. It's a brilliant, really a very good, decent horror film. I don't know if it's going to be for most uh, American uh, horror audiences, but I think you should give it a try, and I think most of you guys will love it. So there you have it, guys. That is my review and video for When Evil Lurks. I hope you did enjoy it. And if you did, please give me a thumbs up, like, and share, because it does help out with that YouTube algorithm. Also, if you're new here, please hit that subscriber button. Ring that notification bell. That way you notify anytime when I put a new video such as this one. Once again, my name is Lamont Smith, better known as the Horror Miser Money G. And always remember that horror rules. <laughs> i see you in my next video. I hope you guys stay safe out there. Thank you.